An absolute value equation is an equation that has absolute value bars in it. In order to solve absolute value equations, you first need to understand what is the absolute value. The absolute value measures the distance of a number from zero. So for example, the absolute value of negative three is basically saying how far is negative three from zero? Well, negative three is three units from zero. So the absolute value of negative three is three. What is the absolute value of four? They're saying how far is four from zero? That's four units from zero. So the absolute value of a positive number is just equal to that number itself. And the absolute value of a negative number is equal to that number positive. So you have to keep that in mind so that you can understand the process for solving absolute value equations. So an absolute value equation is an equation that has a variable and an absolute value in it. So if you have an absolute value equal to a number, you have to consider what can x be to equal that number. So to kind of drive the point a little further, if this said the absolute value of x is equal to 5, well what does x have to be in order for me to get 5? Well, if x was 5, then the absolute value of 5 would also be 5. Also, if x was negative 5, then the absolute value of negative 5 is also 5. And so for that reason, you have to take x and set it equal to this number k. k just represents a number. The positive of it, and you also have to set it equal to the negative of that number. So if you have an absolute value equation that looks like this, this says that x is equal to k or x is equal to negative k. So whenever you're solving an absolute value equation, you're going to take it and break it into two separate equations, except in two special circumstances, and we'll talk about those in a little bit. But let's work an example. Okay, for example one, we're going to solve the absolute value of x minus 3 equal to 4. So basically, we're trying to figure out what does x have to be in order to make this equation true. So what does the inside of this needs to be in order to get 4 out? Well, the inside of this needs to either be equal to 4 or negative 4. So we want to take x minus 3 and set it equal to 4, and x minus 3 and set it equal to negative 4. So this is saying if the inside of that is equal to 4 or if it's equal to negative 4, then this will come out to be true. Well, what would make the inside of that equal to 4? Well, solve this equation. Add 3 to both sides. x is equal to 7. Add 3 to both sides here, and you get x is equal to negative 1. So if x is either negative 1 or 7, then you'll get a true statement up here. And you can plug it back in and see. 7 minus 3 is 4. The absolute value of 4 is 4. Or plug in negative 1. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. The absolute value of negative 4 is positive 4. So these would be your two solutions. You can write it like that, or you can write it in set builder notation with the negative 1 and the 7 here. For example 2, we're going to solve 2 times the absolute value of 3x minus 4 plus 7 equal to 9. So before we can apply the what we did before by taking what's inside the absolute value, setting it equal to the number positive and negative, we have to first isolate the absolute value. So that means get the absolute value on the side by itself. So you want to get rid of this 7 first. So if you subtract 7 from both sides, you get 2 times the absolute value of 3x minus 4 equal to 2. Then get rid of this 2 in front by dividing both sides by 2. And you get the absolute value of 3x minus 4 equal to 1. Now that you have the absolute value by itself, now you can take what's inside the absolute value and set it equal to this number positive and to this number negative. So you want to take 3x minus 4 and set it equal to positive 1, and 3x minus 4 and set it equal to negative 1. And then solve each of those equations. Add 4 to both sides. You get 3x is equal to 5. Divide by 3. You get x is equal to 5 over 3. And that's a 5. So that's one solution. And then over here, add 4 to both sides. You get 3x is equal to 3. Divide by 3. You get x is equal to 1. So your two solutions are 5 thirds and 1. And you can plug them back in and check it, make sure it works out. You can write them like this, or you can write it in set builder notation. 5 thirds comma 1. And that's how you work that problem. For example, 3, we're going to solve another absolute value equation, but this time we have an absolute value equal to another absolute value. 
you use the same principle except you stick with one side you keep what's inside one absolute value the same and then you only change the positive and negative on the other side of the absolute value so basically I'll take 3 minus 2x and set it equal to x plus 5 but then I'll also take 3 minus 2x and set it equal to negative x plus 5 so just like we did before we took one side and set it equal to the number positive and we took the other one and set it to equal to the number negative you want to do the same thing here and then solve each equation so you can move the 2x over you can go either way I just like to keep my numbers positive so that's why I moved the negative 2x over you get 3 equal 3x plus 5 subtract 5 you get negative 2 equal 3x divide by 3 so x equal negative 2 thirds is one solution and then over here you will have to distribute the negative so 3 minus 2x equal negative x minus 5 so that negative goes to both of those terms move the 2x over again you can move the x over instead of moving the 2x over just depends on your preference you get x minus 5 add 5 to both sides you get x is equal to 8 so your two solutions are negative 2 thirds and 8 again you can plug them back in and check them and make sure it works so there are two special cases when solving absolute value equations and that is when you have an absolute value that equals 0 and when you have an absolute value that equals a negative number so in all cases except these you'll always get two solutions because you'll consider the positive and the negative um, answers or the negative numbers so when you have absolute value that equals 0 well there's only one number that can be inside of here that will make that equal 0 and that's 0 so in this case when you have absolute value equal to 0 you'll end up with one solution so you would just take x minus 3 and set it equal to 0 and solve by adding 3 to both sides so this is a special case because you end up with only one solution so the only number I can plug in here to make that 0 is 3 the other case, the other case is when you have an absolute value equal to a negative number so remember the absolute value measures the distance of a number from 0 so think about distance can distance be a negative number so distance is a positive number when you're talking about how far something is from something. So because this absolute value is a positive number, it will never equal this negative number right here. So whenever you have an absolute value equal to a negative number, then it will result in no solution. So you can write no solution or you can write a set with nothing in it, which means the empty set. And so these are your two special cases of solving absolute value equations. So this was a quick video on how to solve absolute value equations. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more math content related to algebra or other topics. And also make sure you hit the bell so that you'll get a notification whenever I release a new video. If you have any qu questions of any kind, make sure you put them in the comments below. And thanks for tuning in.